All right, welcome back to our basically mini course on using Sudorite and Story Engine. In the last couple of videos, we've covered the brain dump, we've covered genre and style, and in the last one, we covered how to do the synopsis. I've basically uh, gone through and added a lot of my own details to this, and it's very, actually very similar to what I just put in the brain dump, <laughs> honestly. Um, but this is one area where I encourage you to really go to town and make sure that everything you want to be in this book is in this synopsis and at least briefly mentioned. You'll have a greater chance to flesh out your outline and such later. Uh, but let's take a look at this and move on to characters. Characters are a very important part of Pseudorite and in the story engine in particular. Uh, because they're going to have a very direct effect on the prose of your novel because every character has their own personality, has their own way of talking. And when it's writing the prose, it is looking at this bunch of characters, this list of characters. And so we definitely want to get this right. If we learn a little bit more about this, it says the character section tells Story Engine how to write your characters. This can affect how the dialogue is written, what choices they make, and how they interact with the other characters. Update this section as your characters evolve in the story. If you write your own characters, follow this format and it tells you how to input them here, uh, which you can do. You can write your own characters here or you can use a program like ChatGPT or Claude to develop the characters and then you can put them in here and that will save you some of the text, some of the words that Pseudowrite gives you so you can use those words later in writing your prose. Um, and this section is generated based on the synopsis. So if you have a character that you want to put in this field, make sure it shows up in the synopsis or you can just add it yourself later. So let's go ahead and hit generate and see what it gives us. All right, so we have a bunch of different characters that it's given us. It's given me 10 so far, which is good. Uh, honestly, most, some of these here at the end are not needed necessarily. They are technically mentioned, um, but they don't have a huge role. Uh, so you can just delete some of these if you want, because you don't need, necessarily need them. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about a few tips to really maximize your space here with these characters. Now you can rewrite this and use more words to rewrite it. And so you could, you know, it gives you the example here of add more physical description, adding character relationships or how they bounce off each other. Something I recommend you have uh, and you can add this yourself if you want, or you could do it in ChatGPT. But something I recommend you have is a description of how this person talks, right? So go ahead and input this into there and say something like, rewrite it to add more information about how each character talks and what their dialogue sounds like. And I found that if, if that's all I put in there, it tends to be pretty generic and saying like, oh, they have a strong voice or something vague like that that uh, I don't necessarily want. Uh, so I want it to get specific in like the cadence uh, of their sentences. So I'm just gonna tell it that. I'll say get specific about Things like cadence, uh, sentence structure, um, vocal variety, any words that they over rely on, etc. All right. And this should give us a, a little extra layer. Now, the reason I put this in here is because this information very strongly affects how this character sounds when it is generating the prose. And so while this is something I wouldn't normally put into my character sheets or, or character information, because I don't necessarily need to know these things, uh, it sort of flows out of me naturally. I have, you know, you can have a different style for each one. The AI isn't necessarily going to know that. Now, if you, you can also go too far the other way. If you say this person is always shouting, 
Uh, it's going to take that literally and the person's always going to be shouting and people aren't necessarily that way. So you want these to be somewhat subtle and you will know if it's not subtle if when you are generating the prose and you're seeing a character behave in a very strong manner and in particular behavior all the time. And then so you can then go in and tweak the prompt and, and try again. Um, but we're just going to rewrite it with these in mind and see what it does. All right, so... Let's look at one of these. George, a newlywed and devoted husband to Una. George speaks with a deep, commanding voice that matches his tall stature. He's often direct in his speech, preferring to get straight to the point. He has a tendency to use military jargon and come across as brusque, but his love for Una softens his rough edges. That's actually pretty good. It is not what I needed for this particular character um, because this character is not someone who has a very strong commanding voice. He's actually a little timid, a little bit gentle, but still a really good knight. Um, let's read another one. The bride of, uh, so Una is the bride of George. Una has a soft, melodic voice that is often soothing to those around her. She speaks with a gentle cadence and tends to use her words carefully. She is not one to back down from a challenge and her determination can be heard in the way she speaks. So that's okay. Um, I would definitely change some things about her soft melodic voice uh, and her gentle cadence because that's not really her. In fact, I would probably switch these two around a little bit. Um, but if we look at the Fairy Queen, which says a powerful and enigmatic figure, the Fairy Queen speaks in a melodious voice that carries a hint of magic. Her sentences are often poetic and she has a tendency to speak in riddles. That's kind of true, but I feel like if I leave this here, uh, she will literally be spouting poetry when we get to the AI. So eh, it might be a good example of something I want to tone down a little bit. Despite this, she inspires loyalty and devotion to those who serve her. Her voice is, has a calming effect on those around her. Sure. Another thing that I'm experimenting right now is adding character uh, personality types like the Myers-Briggs test. So let's just say for uh, the sake of argument that George was an ENFP which is what I am, by the way. Um, on the Myers-Briggs test. Uh, this is a good way to kind of feed the, inf the AI a lot of information with only a few words. Uh, and it's something I'm just starting to experiment with. So I have yet to know if it's really that effective. We're going to see. And if it is, I will make a video about it. Uh, but something something you can maybe experiment with to look at all the different personality types because the AI does know them. Like Myers-Briggs is, is a good one. The Enneagram, uh, the DISC profile, the Strength Finder. There's a bunch of them out there. You can include a little bit about that for each of them and say, hey, you know, what, what would these people have as their personality type? And include that in here. And what that'll do, hopefully, if it works out, is give the AI a very clear understanding of what this character is like without having to really spell it out for them. Uh, so that's my hope and we'll see how that goes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and fix up all of these to make sure that they are what I want them to be and come back and uh, get into the next video where we will tackle the outline, which will be a big one and I will see you then.